Hey VC, it's Eric, and of course you just caught my uh, one of our dogs rolling around in my room. Anyway, um, back to talk about some CDs, because that's what I've been buying lately. Uh, most of these came from thrift shops, but uh, we're going to try and get these pretty quickly. So, hope everyone's having a good holiday. Um, I will at some point do an end of the year wrap up video and talk about my favorite albums of 2017. Wow, really? Okay, um, at any rate, uh, I picked up the Scooby Doo 2 soundtrack. I mainly picked it up because of, let's see if I can get in real close and do this without the glare. The uh, Harvey Danger track, the New Radicals track, and I want to hear this Wooly Bully cover by Bad Manners. It was a dollar. Some of these bands I've heard of, but not heard, so I figured I'd check that out. The Living End, these guys are from Australia. They were part of that 90s punk, pop punk kind of thing, but they also had a kind of psychobilly sound going on. So I wanted to check them out. I found this for like $2. A CD I already had, but I didn't remember that I had it. Smithereens 11. Uh, recently we lost the lead singer for the Smithereens. So uh, I saw this and grabbed it. As you may know, I do collect things on the Enigma label. At any rate, um, it's a great album. Uh, this is one that is... One of those late 80s gems, this is from, uh, I think, 89, of course, yeah, right there, 89, that uh, kind of got lost in the shuffle. It's not quite college rock, it's not quite mainstream rock, but it's really good, well worth checking out. Produced by Ed Stasium, who I believe was the producer for Alice Cooper, if I'm recalling correctly, and he might have also worked with the Ramones. The Miracle Workers. Uh, these guys were part of the Neo Garage revival in... Uh, the 80s. This one's on Triple X Records, which was a punk label out of California. <clears throat> um, not not super great or anything, but I wanted to check it out and I found it, so why not? Midnight Syndicate. Um, this is retrospective, 94 to 99. These guys were kind of the synthwave goth era of the 90s. And uh, one of those bands I heard a lot about but never got a chance to check out. And I found one of their discs. And it's just instrumental, gothy, dark kind of stuff. Now, I'm not a big Springsteen fan, but like any good self-respecting folk country fan, I do like Nebraska, so I found this copy. I think I have this on LP, or I did at one point in time. It's nice to get on CD so I can listen in the car. Just been finishing up the Twin Peaks The Return, so I had saw this, Julie Cruz, into, floating into the night. She uh, is probably best known because David Lynch is a big fan and actually produced some of this, this CD. And uh, some of these tracks were used in the original Twin Peaks and uh, Wild at Heart. Speaking of Wild at Heart, recently picked it up on PHS. All right. A band I just name I'd heard but never really heard. Uh, this looks like 90s garage rock, but it's really 90s country rock. Apparently these guys are still out there and going there on the Boston area. Um, when I say country rock, it's not the Eagles, but it's not like Hank 3 either. It's somewhere in the middle of that. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about this album as a, as a whole yet, but it's something I definitely was interested in checking out. I saw this, Pretty Poison. Um, I know these this band because of the, the single, Catch Me, I'm Falling, which was... Where is it? On the soundtrack to this movie. So, um, <clears throat> I know I knew the song, and I saw the disc. This one's weird, because this was obviously stored in a humid climate, because the because you can see that the staple's rusted. That's rust. That's not anything else. That's rust. And at any rate, um, if you're into... 80s synth pop kind of stuff. This might be worth checking out. They're kind of a uh, second or third tier band, but still, you know, if you're if you're interested in digging into that <clears throat> the era of music, one did I just drop? Okay, era of music. It's well worth a look. So I saw this and it really brought back some memories. <clears throat> I used to have this, and I think I sold this and the other album by this band off back in the 90s um, on Megaforce Records. Those of you that remember Megaforce, 
and you see that little tab there, this thing right here. This is from when you had like a silver strip that, that they used to seal the discs. Anybody remembers that? <clears throat> this is uh, Love Under Will by Tribe After Tribe. 90s hard rock, heavy metal. Um, I saw these guys on Headbangers Ball. But they're from South Africa, so they mix kind of traditional South African rhythm and uh, drumming into their sound. <clears throat> yeah, so this was an interesting find. Uh, I hadn't listened to it in years and years and years. And put it in, in the car. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm looking forward to digging back into this. Tribe After Tribe, they're one of those also-ran bands from the 90s that kind of fell into obscurity. All right. Anybody remember these guys? They are still around. The Horrors. Um, this is their EP. I saw these guys live in Minneapolis at the Triple Rock, one of the final shows I saw in Minneapolis. And the lead singer rode around on the shoulders of my friend Bill, and we had a great time at the show. Musically, they're pretty good. I really like, uh, they do a cover of Crawdaddy Simone. They do a cover of Jack the Ripper. And their song that they were known for is Sheena is a Parasite, which of course is a Ramones reference. Happy to find this after all these years. No, I've not heard their new record. I know that some of their records between this point and now, uh, I didn't really care for, but I'm interested to see what they did. And finally, I need some coffee. Okay, finally, podcast I've been listening to forever. It's one of the original podcasts out there. It's called uh, Evil Genius Chronicles. It's kind of a culture, tech, lifestyle, Gen X life podcast. Um, that really doesn't do it justice. The host just talks about his life and talks about his fandom and music and whatnot. So, uh, theme songs provided by The Gentle Readers, and I found a copy of The Gentle Readers CD. Uh, this was a cool to find because this is pretty rare at this point. Small band out of Georgia. Uh, kind of alternative rock, a little bit of funk. Um, not really heavy, but really good, just gentle listening to gentle readers. So, uh, this was cool to find. I, I like finding this oddball stuff. You know, I can find, you know, Pearl Jam. I can find Tori Amos. I can find... You know, Lyle love it all over the place around here, but finding oddball stuff like Gentle Readers or Pretty Poison or Julie Cruz or even The Horrors is uh, not common. So, at any rate, uh, like I said, I'll probably be back with a end-of-the-year wrap-up, and until then, everybody be good, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.